Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Rich Folley. You're watching PBS Books' ongoing coverage of AWP 2018. We're on the floor right now of this amazing festival here, or this amazing book fair in Tampa. And I'm sitting with Jen Benka, who is the executive director of the Academy of American Poets, mm -hmm. and also Adrian Matika, who's a poet and is mm -hmm. most recently the author of Map to the Stars, your most recent collection mm -hmm. of poetry. It's so nice to have you both. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for having us. We're here us. because we wanted to talk about an initiative that's going on with the Academy of American Poets, but I wanted to first start, Jen, with a description about this organization and poets.org and all the things that you do at the Academy. Sure. So the Academy of American Poets is the nation's largest membership-based organization that champions poets and poetry. We're the founders of National Poetry Month, which I hope everyone knows takes place <laughs> every April. Yep. And our website, poets.org, is one of the largest websites uh, publishing po poems on a daily basis, particularly through our Poem A Day series. And one of the things that we launched a, a year ago in cooperation with several other organizations is a new effort called the Poetry Coalition. The Poetry Coalition involves a number of different organizations. I think you said 20 different organizations, 10 different cities, gathering all these organizations and creating something really powerful. H how did you go about doing that, first of all, and then talk about what the initiative is all about right now? Sure. Well, it actually started here at AWP a few years ago at an informal lunch of poetry leaders. And at that lunch, we started talking about the need to collaborate and an interest to collaborate to make poetry more visible. Each of our organizations separately was seeing increased interest in poetry, and yet somehow there seemed to be a little bit of a disconnect in the public sphere. You know, we often hear, uh, does poetry really matter? Are people really reading poetry? I can assure you <laughs> that many, many millions of people are reading poetry every year, and yet that message uh, isn't, as co isn't conveyed as, as clearly or maybe even as compellingly as it could be. So we came together, uh, we decided to form an alliance, and now there are actually more than 20 organizations across the U.S. collaborating every March on programming and thinking and working together about how we can take the secret life of poetry and make it not be so secret anymore. Yeah, I love the idea of not only the coalition, but poetry leaders is a term that I yeah. like, it's yeah. very yeah. powerful. <laughs> and uh, it just feels very superheroish to yeah. me. Yeah. It's yeah. like group to put together this coalition. Uh, right. Adrian, I know you're in you're Indiana University. Yeah. And you're also the poet laureate of the state of Indiana. Yes, I am. Which is very cool. Yeah, thank uh, you. In addition to being a published poet and having yeah. four different volumes now. But how yeah. did you get involved with this organization and, and what is your role? Well, you know, I actually got into at least working with the Academy of American Poets to begin with through using the website and, and being parts of the programming they do. Like, you know, it's been a, immensely influential to the, to the writing I've done to be able to access the website, uh, the Poem A Day project, which I'm, I'm so excited about in general, but I'm also a guest editor for um, in July of this year. Uh, there's a different editor for each month. Yes. Right? So there, there, there are 12 different editors uh, selecting poems uh, to, to share with the very, uh, very large community of readers. Yeah. You're on the front lines, so like <laughs> when you talk about the secret life of poetry, I mean, where do, what do you see when yeah. you're, I mean, obviously you're around people who love it, um, but at the same time, yeah. you see the everyday sort of uh, people that maybe don't know that they love poetry yet, but they're attached or attracted to something. What do you see? Yeah, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a misconception about poetry that it's, that it's difficult, that it's complicated, it's encoded, and part of that comes from the way we get it offered to us uh, when we're younger. But if you get the right poem in front of a person, everyone is a, po a fan of poetry waiting to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all they have to do is find the poem that speaks to them. And so that's when resources like poets.org and um, also the kind of program we do in the community to, to uh, community outreach allows us to get, get the poems in front of people. Yeah, yeah, oftentimes I hear when I'm around poets and I'm around people who write poetry and you know, that community, you hear about craft and form and all these yeah. things. And those are wonderful and interesting conversations. And yeah. yet, there's something much more instinctive, much more guttural that people are attracted to with poetry oftentimes. They don't even know why. It just yeah. feels good. It makes, it makes them feel something, a tear, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden, it's really powerful. I don't yeah. even think they're thinking necessarily, the average reader, about craft and form. Yeah. Yeah. They're just saying, that touched me somehow. Yeah. How do you find your way to those people that are not necessarily in the community, but they're just interested in the power of the written word to move them? That's one of the things that the Poetry Coalition is trying to really tap into. 
every March in our collaborating on shared programming, we're taking up a theme of social importance. And the reason why we're doing that is because one of the things that we want to do together as organizations is demonstrate poetry's power to transform individuals and promote empathy. Mm -hmm. And the reason why poetry, or one of the many reasons why poetry can have that impact on, on people's lives, and we think even more than that on communities, is because the poem is written from a very personal mm -hmm. place. And the poet Muriel Rukeyser says that poetry is written from great depths. <laughs> and when you read poetry, it's one source speaking deeply to another source. Mm -hmm. And that's something that poetry uniquely, we think, offers. And more people having access to poetry, we think, can only only make our communities better and stronger. Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. Just last night on Stephen Colbert, mm -hmm. uh, Helen Mirren was on, and he had her read for like a minute and a half, two minutes, mm -hmm. Alfred Lord Tennyson. <laughs> and he just looked at her while she read this poem in this dramatic reading, yeah. and he cried. Yeah. Wow. And people watching television cried. Yeah. And it was on Stephen Colbert. You know, yeah. this wasn't, um, you know, some hard to find television show. This was national television, and it was really powerful and potent. Yeah. And you see the power that it has yes. to move people. Yeah. So you talked about all these organizations, some of them people may have heard of, Kaveh Kanem and mm -hmm. others, but how do you go about getting everybody on the same page for an initiative like this to kind of get behind five or six key issues, which I, I also want to talk to you about? So our organization, the Academy of American Poets, works very hard to coordinate communications across that network. And we have two key partners, the WIC Poetry Center at Kent State University and the University of Arizona Poetry Center in Tucson that does a lot of heavy lifting. But we have a wonderful group of individuals leading nonprofit poetry organizations today that naturally have a willingness to kind of set aside individual agendas and, and look at the greater good. But I'm happy to say that thanks to the Ford Foundation, uh, the Academy received a major grant that has enabled us to bring representatives from poetry organizations together physically in three dimensions <laughs> once a year for the next few years. And that has really made all the difference. Yeah, you see things like the Dodge Poetry Festival, which attracts so yeah. many people every year. Yes. There is this secret life of poetry out yes. there. It's, it's an amazing thing that people go seek it. To yeah. Yes. It, to touch yeah. it and to be around the people who write it. Yes, yeah. and in fact, Martin Farrell, who's the director of the Dodge Poetry Festival, is a part of the Poetry Coalition. And it was he who said that poetry has a secret life. So I just want to give him credit <laughs> right. for that. I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Can you tell me about some of the key uh, areas? And then, Adrian, while we're thinking, I want you to think yeah. about a poem that you might read from your book that oh, sure, sure. might actually be appropriate for us to like, kind of tell the story <laughs> even further. Because <laughs> right. um, I don't, don't want to throw you a curveball at the last second. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. But Thanks. can you talk a little bit about um, the, the, the key areas of focus for you in this initiative this year? Well, this March, all of our organizations are focused on the theme, Poetry and the Body. Last year, we did Poetry and Migration, and again, every March going forward, we'll take up a theme of social importance. So this year, we have groups uh, like O Miami in Florida here that will be organizing writing workshops, poetry writing workshops with cancer patients. And the idea is letting those folks have an opportunity to reclaim the idea of body while they're facing illness. Mm -hmm. We have another group, WIC, uh, in Ohio, that similarly is addressing health issues, organizing writing workshops around the opioid crisis that they're facing in, in that community. Uh, the Academy of American Poets will be dedicating one week of our Poem A Day series to addressing a variety of different issues on that theme, from uh, trans lives, uh, violence against women, mass incarceration, and, and more. Uh, poems written by folks from all of those communities who have faced those concerns and issues, and will be working in partnership with organizations outside of the world of poetry <laughs> to help amplify those poems. And that's yeah. been exciting, too. That's really interesting to me, thinking about integrating poetry with other organizations, whether they're hospitals or whether they're, um, you know, other, I, could be anything, media organizations, et cetera, but yeah. thinking about how to sort of take poetry out of its natural habitat That's right. and integrate it into this, this world and let it sort of roam wild, yeah. see what happens. Yeah, well, you know, there's something about poetry that lends itself to that kind of out, that outreach and that kind of growth. A poem, a poem doesn't have a, a, a natural habitat. Like, the entire world is a poem's habitat. Do you understand what I mean? So you can take a poem, it's portable. You can take it into 
a hospital, you can take it into a school. You can have it on the street corner. You could take it, uh, have a poem uh, read in an orchard, and it means the same thing and resonates the same way wherever it is, right? That's the great gift of poetry. It continues to give wherever we find it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I was thinking as you were talking about it that people forget uh, sometimes that, you know, up until the mid 20th century, poetry was the most popular uh, form of literature in the world. Like, I, remember, I think it was the Four Quartets, when it came out, it sold more copies uh, of uh, the Four Quartets sold more copies than any other book published that year except for the Bible. That's how popular poetry was at one point. And, it's, you know, we didn't forget about the love for poetry, it just kind of got. Uh, move to the side, and now I think we're seeing a resurgence in the way with with community activists uh, directing their work toward poetry. In some ways, the word itself sort of limits it. It's it's yeah. these people. There's there's a desire for people to share these strong feelings they have, and yeah. I think sometimes people put um, limits on what poetry is. I think there's people who think that it is a certain thing, when in fact, what it is. If you've been around anybody who's sharing these deeply held emotional beliefs and and passions. It's a way of expressing. It's a way of getting it out. It's a way of just performing in some cases. Yeah. And I think that that's exciting when people start to do it themselves and they start to play with the form and figure out they can, they can jump right in. Yeah. And, and when they do it for each other. You know, I was thinking about poetry in the body and one of the ways that, that I imagine the world of poetry to operate is that the community is like a body. And so we spend these, uh, these times taking bits and pieces and parts of that body and you know, caretaking them. As Poet Laureate, one of the first things I did was try to set up workshops for underserved communities in Indianapolis so that the people who would, would care about poetry if they had access to it can access it. That's me taking care of a small part of the body. You know what I mean? And eventually I'll take them further out into the state because I'd like to do some uh, work in rural areas as well. Um, but first things first, I got to start from my home place and move out. Yeah, well, I would love it if you, I hope I've given you enough time yeah, for your yeah. brain to percolate in the background yeah, yeah, while you're yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you would read something for yeah. us from your work. Yeah, I would love um, to. I, it would be nice for you to share given this yeah. kind of initiative? Well, I was trying to figure out one that would go back and forth between all of these, and I couldn't think of that one. So I'm going to read a poem that has Emily Dickinson in it, because that, that always seems like a good thing. It's funny, because I always have this stuff marked off before I go. So <laughs> it's a sonnet, which shouldn't scare anybody. And it's called Emily Dickinson Featuring Basketball and EPMD. And EPMD was a rap group in the 1980s that got overlooked because of gangster rap. Emily Dickinson Featuring Basketball and EPMD. I read poetry out here, spindling the spindles of happenstance, its m dashery like the closed eye of a winking man used for a record needle. I love it when the laces of my suede kicks come undone like the best laid plans. And when I crouch to tie those boys up, I love savoring the shy glory of my girl's skirted knee. The sticks to him branching in the feathered stems of the boo blower she would never wear. There are too many boas in this world, and the first feather in that garish elegance, America, home of lovers and EPMD, breaking car speakers like high school curfews since 1988, someplace where I loved summer, the dash from one hoop to another, a stray kitten off balance and chewing a moth in the bleachers before we gave him a hamburger, and my a business as usual cassette, untangling bit by bit like laughs. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank you. And Jen, if people want to find Poem A Day and they want to start there, they want to jump in, how do you do it? Can you subscribe to it? Do you go to the website? How, yes. how can you participate? Very easily. Just visit poets.org. Right on our homepage, there's a new poem every morning. That's the poem that's published as part of the Poem A Day series. And there's a nice red button that will take you to the subscribe page. It's completely free. And the great thing about Poem A Day is that it is a, a wonderful entry point. Monday through Friday, we're publishing brand new poems previously unpublished from today's poets. And then on the weekends, we feature selections of classic poems, predominantly from the public domain, but also beyond. So if you're interested in what contemporary poets are thinking about, who's out there, who's writing today, it's a wonderful, wonderful introduction. That's excellent. Well, I love the work you're doing. Thank you so and much. I appreciate you both joining us today. I can't thank you enough for taking time to share everything <laughs> it's so you're doing. Great to talk with you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All the good work. Thank, thank you. you so much.